What's up guys and welcome back to Epic Journey Through the Bible. It is February 21 and we are in Luke chapter 4 and the worship thought today is going to be titled Like a Boss. Let's pray. Father God, we need you to speak to our hearts today, to teach us new things and to help us see just how awesome you are and just how awesome your son Jesus Christ is. Uh, please speak to us clearly, efficiently, effectively. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke chapter 4, we're going to start in verse 16. Speaking of Jesus, So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. So this is where Jesus grew up as a young man. And as his custom was, what's a custom? Something like a habit, something you repeat, something you do often. As his custom was, he went into the synagogue. What does synagogue mean? Church. On the Sabbath day. Now, which day is the Sabbath? Well, the Bible tells us that the seventh day is the Sabbath. And if we look around different cultures in the world, different languages, we see that virtually every language has the same word for Saturday as the word for Sabbath. It's just one word. In Spanish, it's sábado. It means Sabbath and Saturday. It's the same word. In English, we have Saturday and Sabbath, but it's the seventh day of the week. If you look at your calendar there, the seventh day, Saturday, is the day when Jesus went to church. And that's probably the day we should go to church too, if we're going to be following what Jesus has said to do and what his custom was, what his habit was, was to go to church on Saturday, on the Sabbath. Okay, so he went to church on Saturday and stood up to read, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. They're just looking at Jesus. They're just staring at him because he just read a messianic prophecy as if it was pertaining directly to him. And listen to what he says next. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? Remember, this is where he grew up. They knew who this guy was. They knew Jesus as a dude, as a regular guy. So here he is reading this messianic prophecy, and it's a little startling to them. Especially when he says the scriptures fulfill in your hearing right now. That's really startling to them. Then he said to them, Jesus continues on, You will surely say this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout all the land, but none of them was... but." To none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. So he's saying, look, there was lots of widows. There were lots of widows in Israel. Your people, God's people, had lots of widows. But God sent Elijah over to the other people because his own people, again, a prophet is not accepted in his own country. Continuing on. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. So again, God's people had plenty of lepers, but God sent his prophet to the other people, the people who were not following him, because the people who were following him were rejecting his prophets, rejecting his chosen ones that he had sent to them. And Jesus is foreshadowing that they're even rejecting Jesus, who is in their midst right there in the church on the Sabbath day, reading the Messianic prophecies to them. And he's saying, you too will even reject me as the Messiah. Now, as you can imagine, they're not very happy with this. Verse 28 shows just how displeased they became. So all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things were filled with wrath. 
and rose up and thrust him out of the city. And they led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Wow, that escalated quickly. Then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. Wasn't time yet for Jesus to be sacrificed. And so he just passes right through the midst of them and goes on his way. Pretty epic story, like a boss. Jesus was not shy here about sharing exactly who he was with his own people from his own town. If anybody should have accepted him, it should have been them, but they rejected him. And many times we find that a prophet is not welcome in his own town, in his own country, but he's rejected. And God's people had been rejecting prophet after prophet after prophet until finally God sent his own son and they rejected his own son, the son of God, the Messiah, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So what can we learn from this? Well, we can learn this. Just because we say we're believers doesn't necessarily mean we're accepting everything God is showing us. Let's accept all of his truth in the Bible, including the seventh day Sabbath, including Jesus being the Messiah. Let's accept him into our hearts. Let's live by his truth. Let's follow his word. God bless you guys. Have a tremendous day today.